Good day and welcome to Connect, our daily meditation where we connect to God, each other and our own inner selves. Now we read in the Bible that it's good to meditate on the Word of God, so find a comfortable place and inhale slowly, breathe in peace. Exhale, drive out worries, stress, anxiety and fear. Now reading today is out of the message and I'm reading out of James 4 verse 13 to 15. And now I have a word for you who brashly announced today at the latest tomorrow we're off to such and such a city for the year. We're going to start a business and make a lot of money. You don't know the first thing about tomorrow. You're nothing but a wisp of fog catching a brief bit of sun before disappearing. Instead, make it a habit to say, if the master wills it and we're still alive, we'll do this or that. May the word of God be blessed. Amen. Now, I read about André François Raffray, who, when he was 47, worked out a deal with Jean Calment who were 90 years old. He would pay her 420 euros each month until her death in order to secure ownership of her apartment in Arles, France. Now this is a very common practice in France, benefiting both buyers and seniors on a fixed income. Unfortunately for Raffray, Jean Calment has become one of the world's oldest living people. Still alive at 122, she outlived Raffray, who died in 1995 at the age of 77. He paid 154,802 euros for an apartment he never lived in. And according to the contract, Raffray's beneficiaries must continue payment until Mrs. Kelman dies. Now, our reading today warns us of presumptions. In our Bible reading, we have a typical wealthy businessman who measures success by their own plans and achievements without even seeking the will of God in prayer. And according to James, this is kind of very presumptuous. You see, the issue here is not in what is said. The issue here is in what is not said. In fact, if you looked at it, careful planning in life is is, is essential. And yes, careful planning is expected. But in our Bible reading, there's no mention of God whatsoever. And that is the problem. There is no thought for God. And so we would say that this is a real, actual atheism, really. This is living your life as if there was no God at all. Planning your life as if God did not exist at all. Even if you are a believer. I have heard some believers do this. Now, the first thing that makes this planning without God foolish is the total complexity of life. Life is not always easy as pie. It's an unlimited diversity of forces, events, people, circumstances, etc. All beyond your control and my control. It's so variable, so utterly uncontrollable that it is beyond any person to to either determine the future or design the future or even control the future. And so, my friend, the bottom line is that you don't know anything about tomorrow. Life is uncertain to us as human beings, but it is not uncertain to God. 
He knows the future and He knows where He is leading us. And we can only be confident about the future if we are in His will. I mean, you and I are so transient. Our lives are so temporary, isn't it? You and I are so frail, so fragile, so vulnerable. How ridiculous to plan as if you were immortal, deathless, to plan as if you were all-powerful, to plan as if you were all-seeing and all-knowing. Life is so short. To us, life seems long because we measure it in years. But compared to eternity, it's nothing. It's a puff of smoke. Here today and gone tomorrow. We count our years at each birthday, but God tells us to number our days. Why? Because we live one day at a time, and those days rush by more quickly the older we get. And since life is so short, we cannot afford just to spend our days or to waste our days. We need to invest our days by taking God into account when we plan our lives and make sure that we are guided by God every step of the way if we want to be successful in life. We cannot control future events. We don't have the wisdom to see the future or control the future. And it's a, an absolutely stupidity to boast about something that's completely out of our control. It's like going through the dark Amazon jungle without the map <laughs> or over the stormy sea without the compass. You might think, hey, it's my life and I can do what I want to do. Yes, correct. It's your life and you can do what you want to do. You take your choice and you pay your price. But would you really rather have your limited, imperfect perspective without the perfect, eternal, loving insight of God. That's a bit crazy and bonkers, don't you think? God sees it all and knows it all, and therefore He is the perfect guide, the perfect GPS in life. He has the big picture of how all things in life and all persons are interwoven. So, are you asking, Lord, bless what I'm doing? Or rather than, Lord, help me do what you're blessing. Which one is it? Are you seeking first the will of God? God wants to show you His will as you look into your future. And God promises to guide us. God says in, in the Psalm, Psalm 32, He says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. How wonderful to have the voice of God saying, this is the way, walk in it. How wonderful to be led by the Spirit of God. We don't need to be fumbling and staggering around and come to the end of life saying, well, my youth was a mess, my adulthood a struggle, and my old age a regret. And so I guess the choice is quite simple. We can be either be practical atheists, doing life our own way, and therefore basically defying God, or we can do life and plan our lives around God's will. The choice is ours. And God is very clear on this matter. Godless planning is not just bad planning, my friend. It is sinful. It is unholy planning if we keep God out of it. I read about the guy who knew God's will and yet did it his own way. He became his own God and he basically wrote a poem called Invictus and his name was William Ernest Henley who died in 1903. And this is what Henley wrote. Out of the night that covers me Black as the pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever God may be for my unconquerable soul. 
In the foul clutch of circumstance, I have not winched nor cried aloud. Under the bludgings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of rough and tears looms by the horror of the shade. And yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll, I am the master of my fate. I am a captain of my soul. And so, my friend, the biggest fool is not the man who says that there is no God. The biggest fool is the man who says that yes, there is a God, and yet decide to be the captain of his or her own soul. And so for today, I leave you with one question. Have you taken God into your plans? Please pray with me. Father God, I believe that you uphold the creation by the strength of your mighty power and that in your word you have revealed your perfect will for our lives. Father, I desire to do your will. Help me to live each day of my life in holiness and righteousness. Help me to walk in spirit and in truth. May I look to you and not to the ways of the world. May I grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. May I apply myself diligently to pursue your greater plans and purpose in my life. And may I know you in each and every decision that I take. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.